that. John, would you like to ask the first question? I mean, sure. I, just, John, tell us what you like about this pick and then what kind of player the Seahawks are getting. Yeah, I would say in a, in a really unique year, uh, Jason Barnes did a great job, uh, as well as all of our scouts, but, but did a great job with, you know, the six games that these guys played and and really getting to know uh, uh, Dwayne and, and uh, uh, really knowing the person, the competitor, and and, and who he is, uh, family makeup, everything. And, uh, yeah, so overall just, you know, extremely explosive, 591 190 something, 43, whatever, 6 to 9, ran a 10 5, you know, 100 meters in high school, 21 5, 200 meters, just really explosive guy, can throttle his speed, uh, tough. We're getting a guy that could play a number of different positions and uh, is a kickoff returner, could be a gunner. There's a really cool shot of him as a gunner against. Um, uh, against Central Michigan, where he you know just throttles somebody, and um, yeah, we're getting a guy that's 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 competitive, hungry, intense. Uh, he's got some dog to him, and uh, yeah, I think you guys already spoke with him, right? Joe Fan, John, I think with just three picks, uh, everyone was kind of expecting you guys to, to try to move back and get some more ammo. Um, was that a situation where? The opportunity to present itself or the risk of maybe losing your guy wasn't worth it you know what it was a combination of both actually uh we, we we thought we were close and then we lost something right at the end um and so uh i mean we were literally like maybe five minutes away or something so uh it just kind of fell apart and and we just moved forward and we were excited to just take take our guy i know you guys get tired of saying like the best available player and all that but i mean it was the he was the guy. Corbin. Hey, Pete. So I look back at Dwayne's career. He was starting as a corner when he first got there. He was a running back at the high school level. John mentioned the versatility he brings to the table. How much of the fact that he played extensive snaps at corner pique your guys' interest picking him this early in the draft? Yeah, it makes him a, you know, a unique player coming in at the position. Um, you know, whenever – think about the staff that had to make it, you know – present this to him you know we we need we got problems on defense we need some help we think you could be a cornerback I mean how many wide receivers do you know get asked that a question so the the versatility the all-around athlete that he is uh the the person that he is he's really smart and bright and wide open and and team oriented and all of that um you know that I think it just showed the variety and the the, you know the, the spectrum of this guy's ability we love the explosiveness part of it but you can also see there's a few clips in here and you can see when he was playing defense he was physical he went after guys which we love about uh what he brings to the wide receiver position because our guys are called on to block a lot in our offense and they, they, they have uh, it's a big part of, of the game and uh, that was one of the, the additional elements that just added to you know why we like doing doing so much you know so we're really fired up about it Bob um, yeah he, he see, Dwayne seems to have an awful lot of last year he got an awful lot of yards after the catch and all of that is that something that I, I'm sure an attribute you guys would always like anyway, but but with maybe the, the changes you might make in the offense with Shane, is that something that maybe was a little bit more of an emphasis or a priority in, in looking at guys this year? Yeah, it, it is part of it. it really, I mean, you know, the it's the whole makeup of this player in particular, but we want guys that are versatile. We, we like to play with good rhythm and tempo. We would like to keep the guys out there on the field, so they have to be versatile and able to do all of those things. Uh, he he definitely is a guy, as you can tell from just the highlights that you probably have seen, that we can hand him the football, we can flip it to him, we can do things with him behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's run very effectively in reverses and stuff like that. So uh, and the returns show that as well. So um, all of that is is we were looking for a receiver that would have all of that kind of versatility, and he was really an exciting one to to you know to get. Michael Sean to draft. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Dwayne described himself as a dog, and John, you just used that same word. Uh, what do you guys see in him to use that particular adjective? Well, I think it, to uh, reiterate, you know, basically what Pete just said, I mean, for a staff to go to a guy and say, hey, you know, a guy that's supposed to be, you know, kind of a track athlete, right? You know, the 100 meter sprinter and 200 meter sprinter. I think 
shoot, I think it was like a 23-something foot long jumper. For that guy, for a guy like that, you know, usually you hear the term track guy and all that for a staff to go to a guy and uh, ask him to go play some defense and, you know, go play against Michigan State and, you know, just go compete. You could see him just flying up and run support, throwing his body around. He's just a competitor. He just – He's overcome a lot. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's just a great, great guy. And like I said, you know, uh, Jason did a great job. Jason Barnes of uh, really getting to know the person and the competitor, and we've really emphasized that. You know, when you have all these picks, I mean, you know, you got to be able to sort all this stuff out, you know. So, uh, no, we just felt like we really were focused on the person. And, and, and you, you could tell he's got, he's got you know, I don't want to compare him to people, but um, – so I guess I won't, but uh, he's got he's got some really cool attributes. Come on, John, you can tell us what name were you gonna yeah. drop? Right <laughs> All right, thanks, you guys. Yeah, Curtis. Yeah, John. He uh, he said that he lined up a lot at X the last year at, at Western Michigan. There, how, how do you kind of see him fitting into this offense with you? And then on, you know, with this kind of mold between the slot and and outside. And then on top of that, what kind of led to his big? breakout season i mean it seemed like six great games he went kind of wild for them what, what what did you see that kind of allowed him to make the jump into that player well i would say the the, the first part of it really the coaches you know will figure out but when you know, he, had, he had some some really good interviews with us uh you know he had a great interview with with uh uh nate and, and carrie uh he and he the way he described the way he learns is you know learning all the different positions and figuring out what everybody else is doing and then he can just go play and that frees him up so uh you know the coaches will figure out where he can play but the cool thing about this guy is he, he's he's shown that he can play all over the place and uh and again you get the versatility as a kick returner and and and, and, and as a gunner if, if, the, if the coaches deem appropriate but uh uh you know with with this year i think it's pretty cool to see a guy <clears throat> you know in that conference having only six games be hyper focused the way he was and to uh, uh, compete at the level he did and then Jim Nagy and his staff obviously invited him down to the senior bowl and that's really where you could see him uh, I don't want to say separate himself but be able to kind of uh, uh, you know show exactly what he could do and all the different tools the, the different skill sets he had whether as, as, a, as, a, as a route runner and a receiver and a competitor going down there to the senior bowl sorry Jen? He talked to us about the injury that he had and called it the best and the worst thing that had happened because you don't wish for an injury, but he said he learned a lot from it. How did he characterize that? And John, I guess this goes to you in the conversations that you guys had with him. Just his focus, just being able to uh, concentrate on, on uh, some personal things that he needed to work through and then being able to focus on uh, how important football was to him and, and the future you know that that he envisioned for himself. Sorry, Brady. Hey, John. Uh, how much does uh, he's twenty four years old? How much, if at all, does his age factor into the scouting equation for you guys? It's part of our equation, but you're not talking about a guy that has a ton of tread, a ton of wear on him. So, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that's still fresh and trains hard and and uh you know he's just a he's just a unique athlete those guys that there's certain guys that can just run all day there were a number of them in this draft you guys saw a bunch of them go pretty quick uh you know right in that area in the second round uh you know with two two going right after us and and, and marshall and, and and some guys like that uh rondo moore you know those guys can just run all day and uh uh you know Rogers from Clemson. There's a whole bunch of those guys in this draft, and uh, uh, yeah, he can he can he trains he trains hard and he can run all all day. Yeah, you know, John. One of the things I, I would just add to as we're kind of getting a feel for who he is, and you, know, you guys are getting a feel for it also. There were a number of smaller receivers, fast, speedy guys in this draft, but we saw him. Uh, as you know, five nine something, but he was 190 something too, and he and he looks physical, plays strong, plays you know, plays uh, a dynamic style with the ball in his hands and all that. I think that was one of the attributes I know that John liked early on when he first picked him up, and and uh, it, it's been really obvious that that's he, he's got a uniqueness to him in that regard that we'll be able to hopefully use in, in a number of ways. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, it was fun. I mean, 
Pete and I, we, you know, and in in our our whole staff, we really been focused on him for for a while, yeah. uh, especially after the Senior Bowl. Joe, uh, I'm curious how much it goes into consideration. Obviously, liking the player, but maybe also considering how this player complements what you already have on the roster. In this case, specifically how he compliments um, you know, DK and Tyler, or if that doesn't even factor into the equation, it's we just love the player and we'll make it work, um, regardless of what else might be on the roster. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah the, uh, the, 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 the dynamics of his speed, the speed factor, the, the, the track background, uh, that's, you know, that's attractive. You know, we, we want to make sure that we're, our guys are big threats. All our guys run four threes, you know, and, and Tyler and, and DK both run low, low four threes, you know, and so to have another element in there, in there with that kind of speed uh, concerns that you know you provide for the opponent, that, that's that's part of this thinking, you know. Uh, but we're looking for well-rounded guys that fit and can complement too. We'll have the ability to. Well, like DK can move all over the place now. He's learned enough in his couple of years to do that. We use Tyler in and out uh, of the slot, and we're, we'll, we would like that versatility from any of the guys that come on the field. So, uh, you know, when Dwayne gets his shot, you know, we'll 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 use all of that hopefully, and and then mix and match and kind of hide it and, and disguise it as we want to, and and uh, we'll see how that works. But it is all part of it, you know, that the guys have elements that do complement. And of course, you know, you can't replace the speed, and so then we kind of started there. Tim, John, you've mentioned the Senior Bowl a couple of times. How, how significant does that become in the evaluation of guys who might be coming from smaller conferences where sometimes they're just raw talent can outplay what they're what they're competing against on the field? I don't think it's become any more uh, important. It always has been very important for small school guys. The one thing that Jim Nagy's done a really good job of is is because uh, he's kind of an underdog guy. He loves the underdog, so. He's always going to be inviting and looking for those uh, small school guys to come in and compete with, you know, the, the you know the bigger schools and and uh, you know Dwayne Dwayne fits in that category. So, uh, you know, over the years there's been a number of games that have, that have disappeared, but uh, you know the Senior Bowl has always been a very very strong game, great evaluation platform for us. Greg. Guys, how does Shane Waldron's system, the new passing game, and how you want to get the ball out relate to Eskridge and fit his game? Yeah, the uh, I, I think it. I was, I, I'll say it, try to say it better. So I didn't make the point last time. We want real versatile guys. We want guys that can do everything because our guys do have to block. We use them in splits and motions and all kinds of positions more than we have, maybe more emphasis than we have in the past. And that calls for these guys to be able to do a numbers of things. And that means they've got to recognize fronts and who's who, linebackers and DBs and all that kind of stuff as they carry out their assignments. Um, so. In particular, I think you'll see in time as you guys you know get a chance to see Dwayne, you're going to see that he can do all of that. He's a physical kid, and and he'll be able to be a well-rounded player. If you look back and with. Uh what they, they have built in through the Ram system, you know, with uh, Cooper Cup and, 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 and Robert, they have, you know, had guys on the field that stay out there because they can do a little bit of everything. And so we like that kind of uh, versatility. And so I think in the first receiver that we've chosen, you know, with our new offensive coordinator, I think that's a little bit of a statement in that regard that that's, you know, that's something we, you know, we like and, and something we're looking for. So when you see 5'9", you think, well, probably slot, but you're, you're emphasizing He's not just a slot. No, no, I don't see it that way at all. We, we see him as a deep threat. I mean, you, you saw him. He can catch the ball way down the field. He's got great downfield speed. He's got great finishing speed, too. So the the kind of track background he has, you can see the acceleration stay with him as he, as he moves. And uh, he's going to be a, a, a guy that can stretch the field for us. So we won't just restrict him to be an, an inside player. We'll, we'll move him around. Art? You answered that a little bit, Pete, but I was just wondering about is it uh, with his skill set, I mean, some people call it a gadget player, but do you see him as a third receiver being on the field a lot more than th uh, third receivers you've had in the past? Um, I don't know that it's going to take on any more numbers, and I don't want to try to throw around those thoughts right now, if you don't mind, because um, nobody knows what we're doing right now, so <laughs> we'll, we'll unveil that later. But... Um, uh, you know, we, we're 
he he has a skill set that, that I mean you saw him play outside like he said he's played 80 percent of the time he played X receivers out out of the box and, and out there one in one on one situations quite a bit and he certainly can do that and he certainly can be an inside receiver that can get across the field we've seen all of that there'll be um, a learning curve for for him as in, in our offense we do more things than they did. Um, uh, and, and, and that schematically, you know, he'll, he'll have a chance to learn and we'll learn more about him. So John said, you know, our coaches need to get him on the field. We need to start working with him. We need to see what he adapts to well and what comes easy to him. As always with young players, we want to do the things that they do well early so that they can find success and have confidence in, in what we're asking of them. And then we'll expand from there. So that's kind of how we will always approach that with any player at his position. And it certainly would, it pertains here. Curtis? Yeah, Pete, uh, the second half of last season, it seemed like you guys were lacking a solid third option in the passing game, a good, you know, whether it was David not being there as much, Greg being hurt, all of that. How, how much did that kind of put a highlight on needing somebody like this to kind of bolster the group that you had? Uh, you know, Shane, Shane has talked since we first tar started talking about, you know, schematically how we're going about it, philosophically how we're going about the offense, about having three legitimate threats, you know, in, in passing situations so a defense can't, can't lock you down and it was one of the reasons that Gerald was such a big get for us it was such a great acquisition for us in the offseason uh, to, to help us but we always want to have it, three guys out there that they've got to work with and contend with so they just can't double guys up and take them out of the offense so um, I, I will find out you know how well Dwayne fits in in that regard but we're counting on him being a factor and we're, we you know and as we our other guys too this is going to be a great like as I said uh, a couple days ago it's gonna be a wide open competition this camp for guys to show where they fit and uh, we're you know we're waiting to allow that emergence to occur and, and, and you know excited to see the competition bring that out but um, it, it, we want the diversity certainly and one more quick one. Just you guys signed Robert Kim DJ yesterday. What 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 kind of were you looking at there, and how, what did he bring to you, and what were you thinking with the move? Did you do it? Yeah, you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well. You know, we're always looking to get better, you know, and we're always looking to find guys. And, and uh, John, you know, brought Robert's name up. And we, of course, we re remembered him from the draft from before. Lost track of him a little bit because he'd been banged up and missed a year. But, uh, man, he came in here and worked out and he just blew us blew us away. He, and so we're thrilled that he's, uh, uh, that he, he's going to join us and, and add to the competition, bring what he brings. This was a very dynamic football player a few years back when he came out. He's, he's only 26 years old. Uh, he's ready to go. Really, really excited about the opportunity coming here and being with our guys and all that. And so, uh, we'll see. We'll see how this this fits in. He's got some things that he does that he can do that look a little bit different than some other guys. That exactly what we're always looking for: the uniqueness that a guy can add. And, and we think Robert might be able to do a real nice job playing the three technique and moving around in passing situations for us. He's an inside player, though. You know, primarily. Matt. Uh, hey, this is for John or Pete. Uh, Dwayne shared a screenshot of him texting a friend saying that Seattle was the place he wanted to land, this is where it felt right for him. Um, I know you mentioned that he interviewed well and you liked it, but was there something distinct or unique that stood out about him that you kind of felt that same vibe that you guys were kind of simpatico? Yeah, I just think, you know, when you evaluate, we evaluate all, all the different, you know, video uh, meetings that we have with these guys and and uh whether it was the scouts you know at the senior bowl whether it was individual one with with uh jason whether it was uh all of the phone calls that jason had with him and, and the conversations he was quick to respond he was on top of it uh he answered all the questions uh to the best of his ability and then and then our last conversation with him again you know uh, nate carroll and carrie joseph had a really great hour-long interview with him where he just he was just he's just real and I think you know they had a respect for him and he had a respect for them and 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 so you know it was just a it was a it was a very clear picture on the person and how to to evaluate him came across really competitive you know and and uh, and really bright uh, the coaches were really you know they were really impressed and and uh Obviously, you know, he, he commented also, likewise, you know, that he was impressed with the, where we came from. So it's just, it just seemed like a really good, good matchup, and it kind of was the icing on the cake after all of the process of evaluating, evaluating him you know, as a player and, and, uh, and as he came out of his program. So that, it, it, I'm glad that he felt that way. I'm, I'm proud that that's the way, you know, our whole process, because that's not just coaches. 
that's that's everybody working together because everybody contributed to these uh, this you know the communication with him and learning who he is so that's a that's a beautiful thing i like it thank you jen this might be looking ahead just a little bit john but with only three picks you've got some free agency stuff that you're going to be looking at here in the next couple of days yeah. how much did only having three picks change that process for you or maybe in some cases even help yeah well that's why we didn't make the trade we tried to stay away from more picks <laughs> no I, I appreciate the question it's uh uh i think we're gonna be very attractive with just three three picks you know when you're recruiting these guys uh after the draft it's it's uh you know in, in the last several years we've had you know what seven eight Ten, you know, picks, and so it's it's been very it's been hard for us to recruit guys and try to convince them whether it's the area scouts, the coaches, uh, you know, when we're working on these guys to be able to to, to, to convince them that you know they're going to have a clean opportunity, and and uh, so I think just just naturally when you have uh, three draft choices, I think we're going to be a very very attractive uh, landing spot uh, for unless we do something tomorrow, but I don't know if we have quite the fire pile up some picks tomorrow <laughs> yeah we're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna pick at 129 and then we're gonna think about gabe jackson for about a whole <laughs> round and then we're gonna think of carlos dunlap you know finishing the game in in uh in washington for another round and then we're gonna pick at 250 and then we're gonna start recruiting our butts off so no i appreciate the question i think it's just uh i think we're gonna be very attractive for uh rookie free agency and you know it's been a it's been a unique year it's been a hard year to uh evaluate for every team so my hope is that that uh and well not my hope i just i know we're going to do a great job with it and i know um uh the the coaches and the scouts are ready for it yeah we're we're fired up for recruiting you know as john always says you know you tell a trapper by his furs you know so when these guys start making their calls you know totally uh, about bringing guys in uh you know the 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 pressure is on but we'll find out we're going to find out who the real recruiters are here pretty hard to recruit at us you guys got to know when we got here the first year he's like (laughs) Wait a second. We're only going to pick two of those guys in the first round? I'm like, yeah, usually you only pick one. Okay. Wait, we're not going to get all those guys? No, our staff our staff does a great job of recruiting, yeah, so after. we're excited we're, we're about it. We're looking forward to it. Before we get to the last question uh, from Greg Bell, uh, Matt Calkins, what did you get up and eat? <laughs> All right, Greg, go ahead. Wow, he's showing you his beer. <laughs> wow. John, the, the the run on trade downs early in round two, how did that kind of change plans for you or make it harder for you later? Uh, you mean by the time we got there? Right. Yeah, yeah, it was it – was, it, it was hard. It was just more of a, a situation where um, – we kind of thought we had something, you know, so, you know, it just really, literally at the, you know, the last couple of minutes, it fell apart. So we were, we were, once we got there, we were, you know, Pete and I were trying to decide, you know, should we just take the player or take a chance and see, you know, what the rest of the, what the rest of the group looked like. But, you know, we, we, we truly had not made a decision of whether or not we were going to, we were going to move or not. And then it just fell apart. So it's the way, it's the way God wanted it to be. So here we go. Okay, thank you, everyone. See you. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks.